Hello, my name is Larry Parman. I'm the founder of the law firm Parman and Easter Day. Now, our practice concentrates exclusively in the areas of estate planning, elder law planning, and services for business owners. And with me today is my colleague and partner, Jerry Tom, Shiles. Tell them who you are. I, I'm uh, Jerry Shiles, and uh, I'm the, uh, the brains of the organization. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to be talking about today are some interesting topics of interest to both our clients and uh, the general public. Over the years, our practice has changed course a little bit and changed emphasis as complexities in planning occurs as well for family members. And we've migrated our practice to a concept called legacy wealth planning. And one of the very interesting issues that comes up from time to time is that in this era of complexity, our clients have a need sometimes to influence the behavior of their beneficiaries. So we might have, for example, a child that has, a, has an addiction problem or an abuse problem or a child that is not yet through college or a child that maybe is a spendthrift, as example. So share a couple of um, examples of where you've seen incentive trust planning work very effectively. Uh, well, I'll give you the, a classic example that we have uh, that's run through our firm. We have a client where mom and dad were enablers. They had a son who was a spendthrift, he was an alcohol and drug abuser, uh, lived at home his whole time, and the parents never forced him to do anything. But they made a decision in their trust that once they were gone, their successor trustees were going to resolve that problem. And so what they did is they said, no money will be paid to the son, he will have to go through a comprehensive drug and alcohol treatment program and his money will be used to pay for that. If he successfully completes that program, then he has to get a job. And once he gets that job, he has to set up a payment plan through your firm that his bills are paid, not one dollar is used for drug, alcohol, or tobacco. And if he is short of money to pay his routine living expenses, then and only then can the trustee expend funds on his behalf. And that's worked very, very well. Uh, the person is employed, he's supporting his three children, which he wasn't doing before, and those trust fund dollars have been able to prolong that ability going forward, and the hope is that he's going to become more uh, self-supportive, more uh, in tune to what his obligations are, and at some point that trustee is going to be able to resign and let him take over the management of his own affairs. And we've had cases as well where uh, there might be a propensity of a, of a beneficiary not to work and parents are afraid that if they virtually dump a significant amount of money on the beneficiary that that beneficiary might just become their legacy might become that beneficiary as a couch potato <clears throat> excuse me so what we've seen happen uh, very effectively is that I remember one case that I had years ago where the family stipulated that the distributions from this discretionary trust would match the 1040 income exactly. that that beneficiary presented every year. Yeah. So again, that is, again, the term incentive trust, and sometimes we recognize that we can't control everything from the grave, but there is some desire where there's a behavioral issue to try to match the values that the parents brought to the table with those they hope their children to carry into the future. Absolutely. You know, I, I have a classic example that, that comes to mind. Uh, dad made a mistake of giving money outright to his daughter and his son and they haven't amounted to anything and so he said I can't do anything about that round of mistakes but I'm going to set up an incentive trust for the grandchildren they're going to go to school they're going to get certain grades they're going to get a job and exactly like you said uh, we're going to match their discretionary income so if they get a job as a car hop that's what's going to get matched if they get a job as an engineer that's what's going to get matched. So he's making sure that he doesn't make the same mistake with the second generation that he made with the first. Now I think one thing that, that you would agree with is that these incentive trusts don't solve every problem and in fact if they're too onerous they can even backfire. That's right. and, and they can take a tenuous family relationship and completely sever it. And it may, be, it may happen that, that that relationship never comes back. But one thing that I've that I've noticed a lot is that sometimes if parents have been enablers during their lifetime, they try to fix through this incentive trust 
the problems they ignored during their lifetime. So it's not a, it's not a perfect solution That's right. by any means, but rather it's a method by which you can encourage the behaviors that you hope your children follow after you're gone and thereby preserve your legacy. Right. And what we found is that these incentive trusts have worked. Uh, in the cases that we've been involved in, they may not have had a 100% success ratio, but probably on a, a scale of one to 10, they're an eight or maybe an eight and a half, and that's the best you can hope And by for. and large, the, fam the, the beneficiaries are much better off for the way they're structured. That's correct. Even though there might be a little bit of initial resistance to it. Right. Okay, good. Yeah. And, and we found, it's interesting, once they understand that resistance dissolves away. And we've got a child right now that uh, you know wanted us to pay to go to UCO, but didn't finish. Then wanted us to pay to go to Rose State, but didn't finish. And so finally we stepped back and said, hey, we're not going to pay you to keep starting and stopping and failing. Right. Get a job, get yourself going. When you can show us that you're serious about your education, we're there to step in and help you. And so we've, we've gotten that young lady's attention, and now we're moving forward in the, in the proper direction. So, I mean, that raises the whole discussion, not to be covered today, about the importance of the right trustee. Exactly. One that really understands what that family's objective was. Right. So, okay, well, we hope you've enjoyed this discussion on incentive trust. If you have any questions about legacy wealth planning or how the incentive trust might complement your plan or add to your plan, give us a call. Farming and Easter Day. 405-843-6100.